Today, we will discuss flash method development from TLC plates. We're going to start with some definitions. We're going to talk about retention and solvent selection. We're going to then describe how to see your spots on your plate so that you can measure the, re, uh, the retention of your compound. And we will discuss the conversion of those TLC results to flash chromatography methods. Some basic definitions are chromatography is the separation of compounds in a mixture using a stationary phase and a mobile phase invented by Mikhail Savit in 1900. The mobile phase is a solvent or gas pumped through the column or the solvent that moves up the TLC plate under capillary uh, conditions. The stationary phase is the column packing or TLC surface and that does not move. Chromatography includes flash chromatography, gas chromatography, supercritical fluid chromatography, countercurrent chromatography, HPLC, UHPLC, and they all work very much the same despite the differences in the equipment. Uh, again, I used the phase uh, mobile phase and stationary phase and the mobile phase causes the compound to move through the column while the stationary phase doesn't move. And the idea is to get the compound to stick to the stationary phase for a period of time. And the compounds stay on the stationary phase for different amounts of time causing a separation. Thin layer chromatography is TLC. Flash chromatography is a name that Clark W. Still gave the name to the technique where the mobile phase is pushed through the column very quickly. He used air pressure as is still commonly done, but new equipment such as the ReadySEP Next Gen, the Combi Flash Next Gen, uses uh, pumps, linear gradients, fraction collectors, UV detectors, and even mass spectrometers. The weak solvent is a part of the mobile phase that reduces the strength of the strong solvent. It is commonly called the A solvent. Conversely, the strong solvent causes the compound to move down the column faster, and we will generically call it the B solvent. The weak solvent modulates the strength of the strong solvent so the compound or different compounds don't elute too quickly. As we will see, the solvent strength modulates something called a partition coefficient. The compounds partition between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. The compound is in equilibrium between the mobile and stationary phase and we control the partition equilibrium, also called the partition coefficient by changing the solvent strength. If the equilibrium is towards the left as depicted here, where the compound is mostly adsorbed on the stationary phase, the compound elutes later. This is true whether it happens inside of a column or on the surface of a TLC plate. While equilibrium towards the right, the compound spends more time in the mobile phase, so it comes off the column early or runs up the TLC plate early. Here we have a sample run on a column. The same solvents were used, but we changed the proportion of each solvent. In the first run on the left, a 50-50 mixture of A and B solvent gave an elution of six minutes. If we weaken the solvent to 70% A and only 30% B, the compound elutes much later at about 24 minutes. We shifted the equilibrium, the partition coefficient, to make the compound spend more time on the stationary phase and elute later. The step near 27 minutes to 100% B was done to make a strong solvent system to wash out the second compound. For flash chromatography, purification is mostly run with normal phase and reverse phase. 
Normal phase is the original type of chromatography. Stationary phases are polar compared to the solvents. Stronger solvents are more polar and they make compounds elute faster. Silica is the most common stationary phase, although many people also use alumina. Reverse phase is much more recent and it started to be used in the 1970s. As the name might suggest, the polarity of the solvent and solid support stationary phase are reversed. Reversed phase TLC is often very slow to run. Reverse phase method development is often done with HPLC, which can run much more quickly. The Teledyne ISCO AccuPrep focus gradient generator is very useful to create methods for reverse phase. Teledyne ISCO has matching preparative, analytical, and flash reverse phase columns for method development, and this will be discussed in a future webinar. Thin layer chromatography is a very common technique used to develop flash purification methods. It is an analytical technique used to evaluate compound purity, verify a reaction occurred, or see if a compound is in a mixture. One spots the plate with a capillary and develops it with a mixture of solvents to resolve different compounds. This slide correlates retention in columns uh, volumes to the elution on a TLC plate. The capacity factor is the retention of a compound on any column, including HPLC column. T sub R and T sub zero are the retention times. Uh, many people use minutes, but there is another useful unit of uh, retention. T zero is the void volume the volume of the solvent in a packed column. An unretained peak elutes at T0, and unretained peaks are one way to determine the column volume. The capacity factor is related to the column volume, and column volumes are a better measure of retention in chromatography. You can scale up any method or gradient onto a larger column with the same column chemistry, by using the same method defined in column volumes instead of time. And it is a one-to-one -one correlation and very easy to scale up. The important e equation on this whole slide is this one, where the elution time in an isocratic run as column volume is equal to one over the retention factor. The retention factor is the distance a spot travels divided by the solvent front distance. CV equals one over RF. Mathematically equivalent, CV or column volume equals the solvent front distance divided by the distance the spot moved. Since TLC is so important for flash method development, running TLC plates properly is very important. One common error is overloading the TLC plates, causing spots to streak and move more quickly. A solvent system that shows very good separation for TLC analysis is not the best for flash chromatography. The spot should have an RF, a retention factor between 0.5 which is only two column volume elution and 0 0.1 corresponding to 10 column volume elution. Anything longer than that generally causes broad peaks due to diffusion. I often see users trying to rush the TLC process by not giving the TLC chamber enough time to saturate the inside with vapor. The container use can also prevent proper TLC development and require more time and give incorrect results as we will see in the following video. The first thing is to mix your solvent and put it into the TLC developing chamber.
paper long enough for you to prepare your TLC plate. I am spotting two plates. I let the spots dry. And by this time, my developing chamber is fully saturated. This one on the left, this one on the right rather, I have not given any time for the solvent to saturate and the solvent can escape through the beaker and the watch glass. Even though I started the TLC plate covered with aluminum foil secondly, it will still run very quickly. Within a minute, it has run faster than the TLC plate on the right, which I started first. Within seven to eight minutes, the plate that was properly run has completed its uh, chromatography and is ready to be evaluated for method development. The plate that had no time for equilibration and allowing the solvent vapors to escape through the beaker spout is still running. This TLC plate will take fully twice the amount of time as the plate that was run properly. Just taking a few seconds to set up the solvent ahead of the TLC plate and preventing the solvent from escaping saves a lot of time. At the end of 18 minutes, the second plate is ready. Now let's compare the results between the two runs. You can see that the plate on the left shows a lower retention factor than the spot on the right. Uh, the plate on the right would give you incorrect results for method development. Now that we know how to run a proper TLC, let's talk about solvent selectivity. I mentioned the spot should have a retention factor from 0.5 to 0.1 for good chromatography, but sometimes compounds aren't still resolved. Although extending the runtime with a weaker solvent can increase the distance between peaks, the peaks get wider because of diffusion, so they still are not well resolved. Using a different selectivity often resolves closely eluding compounds and make them elute not so closely. We can do this by changing the solvents or by changing the column type. For example, the column can be changed from silica to alumina. Repeat, for example, the column can be changed from silica to alumina or to reverse phase. The solvents can be changed also. Sometimes a simple modifier can be added to the solvent, such as triethylamine or acetic acid to resolve ionizable compounds, but this is a topic for another time. I expressed selectivity as the ratio shown in the slide. Some people somewhat incorrectly claim selectivity is the order of peak elution. 
However, the Aleutian order might not change, but the distance between the peaks might change. The ratio is the best definition of selectivity. So how can we select solvents to change selectivity? A fellow named Sly Snyder placed different solvents into different groups. For example, all of the are solvent strength relative to hexane in normal phase. This means changing one alcohol for another will simply change the retention but will not improve resolution. To change solvent selectivity, just choose a solvent from a different selectivity group. For example, if using hexane ethyl acetate, try substituting ethyl acetate with ethanol, tetrahydrofuran, or methylene chloride. Notice that all of these solvents are miscible with hexane. The solvents must be soluble within one another. Toluene is very useful for compounds with aromatic rings and runs very well on the next gen 300 series with baseline correction. It is possible to use differing solvent or column selectivity to change the resolution. One can get an estimate of how much sample can be loaded on a column using TLC plate, but the retention factor, the RF, is a poor estimate for sample loading. The spots may be very well resolved in TLC, but will be very poorly resolved in a column. The difference in CV, column volume, is a better guide for sample loading but this is calculated from the inverse of the retention factors for both spots. Uh, for a small uh, four gram column, a delta CV of one may allow only a four milligram loading, while a greater delta CV allows a larger column loading. In this example, the solvent strength was reduced for both a column and TLC plate for a series of compounds. The first eluding peak in the column run was the solvent used to dissolve the compound. As the solvent strength is decreased, the difference in retention factor is smaller. The compounds don't appear to have much resolution on the TLC plate. For some purposes, the TLC plate on the right is not very useful uh, for uh, many uh, TLC analysis. The peaks are too close together, or rather the spots are too close together. But the delta CV gets larger and causes better resolution on the column. As mentioned earlier, Overloading a TLC plate or a column causes reduced resolution. The stationary phase has a limited number of active sites and compounds will move down the column or TLC plate until it can find active sites making broader peaks. As long as there is sufficient resolution between compounds, overloading a column or a preparative TLC plate is fine because the goal there is how much can I purify at a single time. This chart is available from the Teledyne ISCO website. It shows how much sample can be loaded onto columns with del different delta CVs, abbreviated DCV on the chart. If the delta CV is six, it is possible to load as much as 10% of the column weight on a silica column but a small delta CV reduces the loading to only 1%. Note that reverse phase columns have a lower capacity and a lower loading, and there is a separate card for those on the Teledyne ISCO website. Teledyne ISCO sells TLC plates with chemistry matching the column silica or alumina, uh, mainly the pH. This causes improved matching of selectivity when creating flash chromatography methods 
from TLC plates when using Teledyne ISCO ready sub columns. So how do you see your spots? Uh, we're going to talk about universal techniques that should work on almost every compound. The most easy method is using F254 plates. Always try this and F254 plates are compatible with very nearly everything. Uh, you can spray them with spray reagents and they work just fine. F254 works because many compounds block 254 nanometer light creating the black spots. When you see the spots, circle them and then determine the RF. This is very simple and does not damage the sample. The compound showing spots absorbs UV light so the compounds can be detected and fractionated with the UV detector in a flash system. That is, if you can see a spot, that means your UV detector on your flash system can also see the compound. Since some compounds don't absorb UV light, there are other techniques that can be used. Sulfuric acid spray is another universal technique. After spraying, when a plate is heated, the compounds are charred to black spots, which destroys the compound. But this only matters for preparative TLC or autograms if you need to reuse the compounds again. This simple technique works on compounds invisible to UV. Some of the disadvantages to this technique are the overspray can damage other things and no one really likes cleaning up the overspray with sulfuric acid. This only works on silica and alumina columns because bonded phases such as reverse phase, diol, and other bonded phases will also char and the entire plate turns black. The heat used to see the spot melts plastic-based TLC plates. However, Teledyne ISCO TLC plates have a glass backing, so they are fine. TLC plates with alumina, aluminum backing are also useful for this technique. This technique is compatible with F254 plates. Another common technique is an iodine chamber. Place the TLC plate into the chamber with iodine. Uh, this is compatible with F254 plates. However, you have to set this up some hours before running the TLC plate to saturate the chamber with vapor, with iodine uh, vapor. The jar can be kept sealed and ready so that once it's set up, it can be used very quickly. Let the plate dry and place in the chamber. Brown spots appear. Circle them and take a picture since the spots will eventually fade. Uh, there is a chance that the iodine will damage the compound. So again, uh, be careful of what you need to do with the TLC plate afterwards. Another technique is a very simple water spray. Simply spray the TLC plate with water. The compounds prevent the silica from being wetted. It is very safe that doesn't damage compounds. So it is safe for preparative TLC and bioautograms. It works with many bonded phase plates such as diol or amine functionalized plates. It is best for non-polar compounds. The spots will fade quickly so get a picture or circle them while you see them. And the following video will show you how it works. You simply spray your TLC plate with water. I used it outside of a hood because it's very safe. And what you see are white spots on a gray background. If someone is working with antifungal or antibacterial compounds, a bioautogram shows the active compounds. This is useful for pharmacognosy applications, Chinese traditional medicines, or perhaps someone is synthesizing antibiotics or antifungals. Use a non-destructive technique to see the spots and mark them prior to the bioautogram. That means a water spray 
or using the F-254 uh, uh, spots. Put the plates face down on the agar for an hour or two. Remove the TLC plates and incubate overnight and look for the areas with no growth and that's where your active compounds are. You can then calculate the RF from correlation with the spots you uh, noted earlier. You take the TLC plates off the agar before incubation so the organisms can breathe uh, while they're growing. We will now discuss uh, method development. Traditional glass uh, columns uh, are run isocratically or with step gradients. However, with modern systems, you can run a linear gradient. Isocratic is very easily determined from TLC as we mentioned earlier. And linear gradients are commonly used for scouting gradients on HPLC systems to verify reactions or to develop uh, methods. What are the benefits of uh, gradients? Well, let's start off uh, with a very simple method. Uh, run a TLC and get a retention factor from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 that is five to about 2.5 CV and make an isocratic run with the same comp solvent composition. That's very simple. Something else you can do is a focus gradient from uh, around five to 10% B solvent below the TLC solvent composition and then five to 10% higher. This allows for some variation in how the solvent is made by the instrument and my graduate cylinders and differences between the TLC and the column. I set the gradient length to be about twice the expected CV and I include the volume of any solid load cartridge in the total column volume. This run is from the sample on the previous uh, slide uh, uh, with the UV and the evaporative light scattering uh, detection. This is the one that was run in the TLC uh, experiment earlier actually. The focus gradient delayed the elution slightly, but the resolution is similar to an isocratic column. It allows for differences in making the solvent or differences in the TLC plate and column chemistry. A shallow focused gradient is similar in resolution to an isocratic run, but steeper gradients behave differently. Let's look at several isocratic runs. This is 20% ethyl acetate in hexanes. Changing the solvent composition to 30% lets us see a third compound. Notice that the last compound has a very wide peak as expected with such a long elution time. And changing to 50% B makes the last compound elute nicely, but the other compounds are not resolved anymore. A linear gradient allows the entire run, that is all three compounds to be completed at once with good peak shape. If the compounds are well resolved, the default gradients on your flash system will work very well. Gradients sharpen peaks because they release the compound at the point the solvent is uh, correct for the compound. Gradients make peaks sharper so the number of fractions is smaller. If a compound tails, the gradient reduces the tailing to reduce the purification time, the number of fractions, and it also improves recovery because the concentration of compound within the tail is increased because of the gradient. The sharper peaks can sometimes improve loading capacity for the column too. The gradient length can be used to adjust resolution. A very, very shallow gradient like those in focus gradients have resolution similar to isocratic runs while steep gradients have less resolution as shown here. One uh, volume is everything eludes together and at 20 uh, volumes, column volumes, we have much better resolution. Here's an example from a customer. 
The compound elutes rather late at about 10 CV at 30% B. <coughs> because of a combination of loading and band broadening, there is some overlap in the compound elution at 30%. The purity of each fraction can be improved at the cost of longer run times and also at the cost of more fractions. And both compounds can be fully resolved at 20% B in 22 fractions. Using a step gradient allows pure compounds and fewer fractions, but determining the steps requires some trial and error for closely eluding compounds. A linear gradient allows compounds to be resolved in few fractions and it is easier to calculate than stepped gradients. From your TLC data, find a solvent system that causes the compounds to move down the plate at about 10 column volumes. Then find a solvent system that causes a delta CV of about 0.9 to 1 CV program a gradient as shown in the inset starting with an isocratic hold for five column volumes at the first TLC solvent composition. Then over 10 column volumes, program a gradient to the second TLC solvent composition and add another isocratic hold for five column volumes. The next gen systems have a gradient optimizer that does something similar as shown in the previous slides. A default gradient is loaded when a column is selected. Choose the method editor menu item. Then choose the gradient optimizer button. This window will appear. Follow the instructions in the gradient optimizer and enter the percent B for each plate. Enter the retention factor for the compound you want to purify and also the nearest impurity. The impurity might be eluding before or after the compound on the TLC plate, but you want the nearest impurity. If the compounds elute closely enough, the system will add an isocratic hold to improve resolution of the compounds. If the compounds have enough resolution, the system will simply use the default gradient to save time and solvent. The compounds will elute during the isocratic hold. The gradient runs to 100% B solvent to elute other compounds from the column that might be of interest. Do you have any questions? Well, thank you, Jack, for sharing your expertise. And we would now like to open um, this time up for uh, Q&A. Um, we have received a few questions but if there are further questions, please feel free to enter them through the Q&A function within Zoom and Jack will respond. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your questions, everyone. And uh, the first question is, since TLC is not a standardized technique, how it's ensured that the reproducibility of the TLC method transfer in the flash chromatography from lab to lab. Gas phase is not controlled doing TLC in a beaker either. Relative humidity, can we talk about how it's affected your method transfer if different quality silica uh, plates uh, are used? Uh, well, first off, I would suggest that TLC can be a standardized technique. Uh, there's a company called CAMAG uh, who works very hard to make it a very standardized technique. Uh, however, uh, the reproducibility of TLCs is sufficiently good for uh, our purposes. And also, uh, 
Uh, Teledyne Isco has TLC plates that match their columns, and that uh, helps to uh, improve the reproducibility. Um, if you keep your plates uh, in a in a uh, container so that they aren't exposed too much to atmosphere, I find that they don't really change too much. And uh, when you do gas phase in the TLC uh, uh, in a beaker, well, that's why I cover it with the foil is to maintain the atmosphere inside. Using the watch glass uh, doesn't maintain the atmosphere. Uh, Different quality silica plates will produce different results. And that's one reason why I will often use a focused gradient if I'm uh, working in a customer lab with TLC plates other than Teledyne ISCO plates with Teledyne ISCO columns. The next question is about activating and heating TLC plates before spotting an illusion. I have found alumina TLC plates do not predict elution uh, separation on column, perhaps due to absorbed water. Uh, alumina plates uh, can vary in, and also alumina columns can vary in both moisture and pH. You can buy activated alumina in different uh, Brockman units or different activities, and that varies according to the amount of moisture on it. Uh, again, Teledyne Isco's TLC plates match the uh, moisture content on the column, so it does work uh, pretty well. Uh, if you do heat up your TLC plates to drive off water, you're going to have to do the same thing for your column silica if you're running open columns. Uh, the next uh, question after that refers to baseline correction, and uh, that isn't strictly uh, uh, TLC or method development, but on Teledyne ISCO systems on the uh, RF Plus, uh, you just enable uh, uh, all wavelength correction and it will do it automatically. If you have a next gen 300 or 300 plus, uh, again, you enable that in your method and it will measure the solvent UV ahead of time and it would then do the correction. Uh, regarding the how much can I load table, is this from experience uh, 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 trial and error or is there a formula or equation for determining capacity? Uh, it's a combination of experience and trial and error, but we are trying to come up with some sort of equation for it. I find that uh, if I run different types of uh, silica in a column that's packed well with compounds that are well behaved, the numbers work out uh, very uh, well. Uh, what happens is if we do with compounds that are ionizable, uh, that have tailing, that reduces the loading capacity. Uh, what are the principal differences if I use alumina instead of silica for TLC and flash? Uh, the answer is there shouldn't be very much difference uh, uh, between the two, uh, other than making sure that the uh, moisture content of the, of the alumina is the same for both your TLC plate. Uh, the next question is, what would be the best size of TLC plates for development of flash? Uh, I'd like to use the uh, plates that are about 10 centimeters tall because they don't take forever to run uh, and they fit into most TLC chambers, but they're large enough that you can accu accurately measure the retention factor. Uh, the TLC plates based on a microscope slide are uh, pretty good also, uh, and they take, don't take forever to run. Uh, but, uh, and I find them to work pretty well also. Uh, could I please explain again how we should decide about the long length of each step in the last slide? For example, if the RF difference is in point two, how should I start the column solvent ratio and how should it end? Uh, what I do is I keep the length of each step pretty constant, uh, five CVs followed by 10 CVs followed by about 
uh, five CVs. And I try to uh, keep it uh, simple that way so that there's not a lot of work. Uh, it makes it very easy for the user. If you're getting good resolution with a flatter gradient, it will still work very well. Uh, so we try to keep it fairly generic. So it's uh, five, 10 and five. Uh, I have another question uh, uh, asking about the price range of our flash systems. Uh, if you leave us a uh, email, uh, we could send you some information on that because it depends on the features and benefits, but very roughly uh, around 15, 20,000 and up. It depends on which flash system. Uh, how to separate UV unabsorbed compound on TLC plate? Uh, okay, you would separate it the same way, but uh, visualization is the difficulty here. Uh, since it doesn't absorb UV, you won't see it with an F254 absorbed plate. But what you can try is a sulfuric acid or a water spray or maybe iodine. So either of those work. There are also many other spray reagents that can be used that are specific for certain compounds. Uh, for example, there are spray reagents that react with alcohols and uh, they are fairly specific for it, but they are also the same compounds that are used to derivatize alcohol for qualitative analysis. Uh, any other questions, please? Yes. 